from PRX. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and North Pole residents, it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And this is, I don't know what else to say other than sometimes I have way too much to say, but I think that says it all. Like, uh, it's time for, so I'll say it again. The stuff is so nice that I want you to sleep twice as much because it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. Uh, we we do it with the bedtime. Oh, wait, what is it? Time for sleep. Oh, yeah, uh, it's time for sleep. I'll say it a third, thrice. Uh, so nice, I say it thrice. Uh, what would that be if there was like a borough in New York named New York, New York, New York? Uh, Okay, anyway, it's time for sleep with... <laughs> Whoops, they said it four times there. The podcast will put you to sleep. That was totally on accident. Thanks, everybody. Hey, everybody, before we get to the story here, as you know, I've been saying, and as you know, Sleep With Me is here for you, to help you. I've been here all year long, trying to keep you company because your rest is important. You're, you're important. Your mental health and your physical health and your good night's sleep is important to me. And I hope you could feel that and that, that you could feel that, 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 that it is important, that you are important. If you're not feeling that way right now and you need some help right now in this moment, there's links to organizations you can connect with in our show notes. And that also means saying that the mental health of the members of our community matter. And particularly right now, when I say black lives matter, when I say black mental health matters, it also means, Scooch, what else can you do? So right now I'm supporting Beam. If you buy a sleep, a sleep phones from our merch store, a portion of those, those proceeds are going to go to Beam. I was just doing it for the Black Friday and Cyber Monday, but I'm spreading it for the whole whole holiday because it's important because you're important and that's why i'm here to support you uh, and uh, there's also a lot of other members of the community out there that are going through the same things you're going through or something similar so that's why i'm here and uh oh and uh, the ch- ch- i guess sh- there's just not really easy transition and, and here's the sponsors that enable me to be here twice a week for you hey this is scoots and i was just wondering if you could take a second and look back at uh, how your year with sleep with me went because 2020 has been a year, and I really hope the podcast was there for you when you needed it. How many times did you listen? How many months have you been listening for? Thanks so much. And then when I think about 2021, I'm, I'm going to be there on a regular basis, just like I was here this year for you, to put you to sleep and to keep you company. And I don't know if you're in a position, you say, wow, I really did listen to a lot of Sleep With Me in 2020, probably 100, 200 episodes. If you're in a position to do so, could you consider becoming an annual patron for 2021 or a monthly patron? It makes a huge difference. That's how I was able to be there. Uh, you know, I... There was certainty. Sleep with me was there Wednesday and Sunday night for you. And a big part of that was because I could rely on the patrons, uh, just a small percentage of listeners who are in a position and choose to be rebels with a cause. They say, I get so much out of a free podcast, I'm going to pay for it. And now people are becoming annual patrons and saying, I'm going to make it. I, mean, I know I'm going to use sleep with me for the next year. Or I know a lot of other people get a benefit out of sleep with me. So think about it. You could do it at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash patron. That's a sleep with me podcast podcast.com slash patron. Uh, sign up as a, a, a monthly or an annual patron. If you do an annual patronage, uh, you'll save, uh, you'll get a month for free. But think about it. I'm going to be here for 2021 either way for you. Uh, but if you're in a position to do so and you got a lot out of the show in 2020, think about being a rebel with a cause and paying for a free podcast. It's pretty rebellious and I really appreciate it. Thanks so much. Sleep with me podcast.com slash patron. All right, everybody, it's Scoots here, and I'm talking about Helix. It's the bed I sleep in every single night. But what I feel great about our partnership with Helix is is that you can find the right mattress for you. Because to choose a mattress, Helix made a quiz that just takes two minutes to complete, matches your body type and sleep preferences uh, to the perfect mattress for you. So if you like a mattress that's soft or firm, whether you sleep on your side or your back, 
back or your stomach. You sleep really hot. With Helix, there's a specific mattress for each and everybody's unique taste. And Helix makes personalized mattresses right here in America. They're shipped straight to your door with free, no contact delivery, free returns, and a 100-night sleep trial. And when I took the quiz, I was matched with the Helix uh, Dusk. And uh, because I sleep on my stomach, I sleep on my side, and I sleep hot. So my, those were my needs. And most of all, my biggest need was to be comfortable and get a good night's sleep. So think about this year. It, oh boy, has it been, you know, it, there's nothing more important than a good night's sleep, particularly this year. You deserve a new bed. Think about that bed you're in now. How long have you had it? Do you really see, when you get in bed, you say, oh boy, whew, this is nice. This feels like a mattress matched to what I need to get a good night's sleep. If you're not saying that, it's time to take that Helix quiz. And that's all you need to do. And plus, you don't have to take my word for it. I love Helix, uh, but Helix was awarded the number one best overall mattress pick of 2020 by GQ, Wired Magazine, and Apartment Therapy. So here's all you need to do. Just go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz, and they'll match you to a customized mattress that'll give you the best sleep of your life. They have a 10-year warranty, and you get to try it out for 100 nights risk-free. They'll even pick it up for you if you don't love it, but you will. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows for Sleep With Me listeners at helixsleep.com slash sleep. Right, Mr. Bard? Just go to helixsleep.com slash sleep. Take their two-minute sleep quiz. The customized mattress will give you the best sleep of your life. Thanks, Mystery Bard. That's Helix, H-E-L-I-X, sleep.com slash sleep for up to $200 off. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody, it's time to talk about that sponsor that's perfect around bedtime because uh, right before bedtime, as you start to get ready to wind down, what do you say you make it tea time with Celestial Seasonings? We all know that a sleepy time tea from Celestial Seasonings is the perfect cup of your your bedtime routine. It can help you start to wind down your day and set yourself up for a good night's sleep. And Sleepy Time Tea is crafted with delicate chamomile, cool spearmint, and fresh lemongrass. And there's comfort and relaxation in every cup. But can you can you just picture me two hands on that cup? And my, I'm trying to think of what what is your favorite Sleepy Time Tea? Please let me know because I say, well, should I have some Sleepy Time Mint or some Sleepy Time Vanilla? But what what's your favorite sleepy time go ahead let me know go ahead you say it out loud say i love sleepy time sleepy time does just fine by me scoots if you can let me and celestial seasonings know online what's your favorite sleepy time tea like which one should i be trying out so whether you're drinking sleepy time at night or candy cane lane or bengal spice in the afternoon or while you're recording a podcast like me celestial seasonings is the original herbal tea company it's been blended in Boulder since 1969. And I want you to head over to CelestialSeasonings.com That's C-E-L-E-S-T-I-A-L S-E-A-S-O-N-I-N-G-S dot com. You could also use the link in our show notes. You could use the link on our website or you could just type it in Celestial Seasonings. Not only can you choose your tea over at Celestial Seasonings, you can learn more about Celestial Seasonings and how they've always been true to the roots since 1969 more than just a tea company. Celestial Seasonings uh, makes delicious teas that improve people's lives by inviting balance, and that belief drives their commitment to customers, their community, and our planet. So get over there, order some tea, read more about Celestial Seasonings. They have recipes, they have their history, and there's even stuff about their iconic artwork. Uh, And you can go over there, you can say, Scoots, I had no idea how many flavors of Sleepy Time tea there were. That's at celestialseasonings.com. And don't forget to let me know. Thanks, everybody. All righty, everybody. It's time for the Sleepy Supporter Zone. If you only hear one part of this podcast while you're awake uh, or you're at a lake, uh, this would be the part of the podcast I'd love for you to hear or pay attention to because it's where I thank the listeners who supported the sponsors uh, and then amplified their support by letting the sponsors know they heard about them on Sleep With Me. And so I want to thank Will, who supported Air Doctor. Lee. Lisa, 
Lisa, who supported Grove, Cash, who supported BetterHelp, and Jamie and Garrett, who got a Helix Dusk. Uh, thank you so much, Will, Cash, Lisa, Jamie, and Garrett, for supporting sponsors. If you support a sponsor, particularly one of our newer sponsors, that we would love to be working with them in 2021. Celestial Seasoning, Sweaty Betty, BetterHelp, Equip, Sun Soil, Air Doctor, Plush Care. If you support a sponsor, let them know you heard about them on the show. It's a huge way to keep the podcast free for everybody. So that's the first part of Sleepy Supporter Zone. The second part is you getting the support you need. If, you need, if, you, if, you, if you're if you in need right now, there's links in our show notes uh, that you can connect with help uh, right now. And this is also about supporting the members of our community. And this year, to close out the year, I've been uh, trying to use the money we're bringing in through Sleep Phones, our new Sleep Phones merch store, and uh, sending a portion of that to Beam. Because it's one thing, you know, for me to be on this podcast and say Black Lives Matter and Black Mental Health Matters, but it also means backing my words up with action. And Beam is a Black Emotional and Mental Health Collective, uh, and it's a group of therapists, lawyers, religious leaders, teachers, psychologists, advocates, and activists working together for mental and emotional health and healing in the Black community. And you can find out more at beam.org, or you could use the link in our show notes. And that is the end of the Sleepy Supporter Zone. Oh, Mystery Bard, a lot of people help out on this show, including you. Who are they? Chris Posty Poster Song. Sounds like a near fall. Wrote the theme song. Edits episodes too. Carl W. The Legend. Also edits episodes. Kenny, Scotty, Jennifer, and Ashley. Runner, 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 runner. Eric and the team let us down. They're on the website. I am the Mystery Bard. I do the lullabies, yeah. I do commissions at JonathanMan.net. I'll write a song for you. It's almost Christmas, y'all. You can tell me the story, yeah. You see the kindness shine straight on through When the listeners form their own Facebook group Keith, Stacy, Sarah, Julie, and Jennifer These are your moderators Get support, dear Scooter, on Patreon Buy the merch and support the sponsors You can find anything you want At sleepwithmepodcast.com And we're so proud Thanks, Mystery Bar. Don't forget to check out our new Sleep Phones uh, with just all Sleep With Me branded merch now over at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleep phones. You can use Sleep With Me to save a little bit of money as a promo code. And uh, that's it. What do you say? We slow it down. Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing? Trouble getting to sleep. Trouble staying asleep. Uh, well, it's time, it's time for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it with a bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake. So it could be thoughts, you know, like that are keeping you awake, like things you're thinking about, past, present, future, uh, you know, all of them. That's usually, those are my thoughts. I think about how the future, how the future is going to go. I'll try to put it in neutral terms. How the future is going to go because of the past. Uh, and presently, I should probably think about it a lot more in the present so that uh, that's part of it. Then I say, well, why are we doing, why, what are you, oh, for your own good, Scoots. We got to do it, uh. So thoughts, it could be feelings, because then feelings come up for me at the same time. I don't know. They're, both are there. I'm getting better at tuning into my feelings, to be honest with you. And then just maybe saying, hey, do, hey thoughts, you know, I've given you many, many years of my life. Uh, billions of hours. Talk about uh, 10,000 hours. I mean, that's another one I got locked down, Gladwell. 10,000 hours of overthinking. And not just any overthinking, like I say, 10,000 hours of focused overthinking. I mean, I may be, I probably, may, I don't know how many hours are in a, in a year or decade, but, or, you know, multiple decades, but for hundreds, of, I'd say probably a hundred, if, if I've been around for 200,000 hours, I was overthinking for, you know, 50% of it. And that's actually not a joke because you say, well, the eight hours you were asleep. So 33% at the time. 
that was either asleep or thinking, you know, so say, well, out of that 33%, let's just say 8%, I was overthinking then. Oh, yeah, I got to get to this podcast intro. So whatever's keeping you awake, thoughts, feelings, physical sensations, maybe some math uh, is uh, there because I said, wait a second. I should probably work on this math while I do this intro. But, uh, thoughts, feelings, you know, it could be schedule, work, or you could work second, third, fourth, you know, fourth shift. I'm here to glamorize the fourth and the fifth shifts because, and just no one does it anymore because a lot of people say, Scoots, none of those exist. Uh, and I say, once again, I have to explain this to you. Yeah. You know, because just because of Hollywood only shows first, second and third shifts, uh, just because I'll... <laughs> Those journalists out there, you know, who focus their time and all the scientists. And that doesn't mean there's not a fourth and a fifth shift out there somewhere. And sometimes, and I think you could all agree with me on this, sometimes the first shift feels like the fifth shift. If you know what I'm saying, you say, oh, man. Like, uh, just like Kathy, that comic book who disliked Mondays. You, some days, you, you, not only do some days feel like Mondays, some days feel like you're on the fifth shift. You say 9 a.m. So, oh, whatever's keeping you awake, I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off of it while you fall asleep. There's someone, I mean, I'm not kidding. Uh, there, you know, Hollywood, and this is, you know, sometimes people say this smarmily, but really Hollywood does use use a lot, reuse a lot of IP. I don't really know anything about Kathy or the creator of Kathy. So then I'm trying to say, well, this could be problematic. There's probably something problematic. Uh, and Mondays are like, yeah, Kathy had a problem with us. Uh, so, we, yeah, but I, like... Uh, has there been a Kathy? Kathy was a comic back when there was newspapers, uh, before, before the, the current times, uh, when we had, anyway, I can't get into it, but Kathy, you, you could, you could look it up. Uh, Kathy was a comic strip, uh, and Kathy disliked Mondays among, among many other of Kathy's wonderful qualities in case Kathy, the Kathy, for the Kathy super fans that are listening, uh, where was I? So whatever's keeping you awake, I'm here to keep you company and take your mind off of it. Oh yeah. What, what, you know, it could be what it shifts. It could be work. Uh, and what I propose to do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky, dulcet tones. Oh, so creaky are my dulcet tones that, uh, even, you know, even Raven says when she went, and, and people said, that's that so Raven, not oh so Raven. And I say, well, uh, we'll, we'll have to agree to disagree. And, uh, and they say, it's right here in the Raven, that's so Raven wiki, not oh so Raven. Also, the, 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 the Yoda-like character on the Mandalorian is the child, not oh, baby oh so. And I said, wow, you really, uh, you really letting me have it. Uh, whatever it is, uh, oh, those, but what I said is that if Raven Simone was listening to my voice, she might say, was that a creaky door that just opened? Was that a full, is that a Foley artist pretending to open a door on set? Uh, and you know, maybe go, maybe uh, I would imagine, and this is only, this is fan fiction, but that Raven Simone is like great to work with, uh. And I think probably that's true because of uh, her long career. Uh, usually that that's a good sign. Uh, and so Raven would say, well, I want to check in. I love checking in with the Foley artist. Uh, Lurleen's my favorite Foley artist. Anyway, she op so she's opening a creaky dulcet door somewhere? No, no, that's, uh, that's uh, somebody who listened. That's a silly podcast. Uh, oh, okay. Also, when like uh, okay, let's get back to shooting my brand new show, the blockbuster show. Uh, it's so Raven. So that's the future. I, the, you know, I don't really predict the future very much, but uh, they say what happened. Like, uh, say, well, yeah, the, all the streaming companies got. You know, they were pitching more and more. Who's gonna have? Uh, 
like, uh, this next phase in Raven Simone's career. And, uh, unfortunately she couldn't get the rights to that. So Raven. And so, yeah, that's how we ended up with it. So Raven, uh, and, sorry. Some people may be wondering, where are you? Yeah. Sorry. You're at sleep with me podcast. to put you to sleep. So a couple things to know if you're new. Cause yeah, I'm way, <laughs> I've wandered far afield uh, as I normally do. So, okay, so if you're new here, welcome. I'm glad you're here. A couple things to know. You may have already figured this out. This podcast is pretty much nonsense, uh, but it's a fine nonsense. It's a very, it's a, I wouldn't say it's, a, it's a fine grain nonsense, yeah. And the reason it's nonsensical is because you don't have to listen to it. I'm kind of like a friend you call. I mean, can you imagine that? You say, Okay, let, let's stay, since we're with this Raven Simone thing, you say, okay, okay, so I accept that there was a show called That's So Raven. Now, what if you had a friend that was a That's So Raven? What if you had a friend, well, let's get even more meta. What if you had a friend that wrote, uh, rewrote That's So Raven with Kathy from the comics? Uh, what, let's just say it was your, like a, your grandmother, uh, or an aunt, uh, or some sort of other f- figure like that. And you say, you know, uh, uh, uh we'll just call her Abby, Abby, uh, Auntie Abby, I'm going to call you. And I want you to tell me all about this thing you're working on and this imaginary, you're mad, you like to write and imagine that, uh, Kathy, like, uh, it's a, what's well, a, yeah, it's a, it's a, that's so Raven and Kathy. In parentheses after. And it's actually like, uh, yeah, it's actually, th- this would work. Like, what if Raven Simone was the person that started rebooting Kathy, like writing it? Uh, I don't know. Does any of this work? And you say, keep talking, Auntie. I'm going to be lying here. You just tell me the whole, go through the pilot again. First, tell me the, you know, every, can you go through a few episodes of that? So Raven, and then how you're going to link it, uh, back, uh, and uh, I'll be lying here. I'll be lying here, not listening to you. So that's the part that usually trips you up. You couldn't really say that because you say, well, I'm really, your aunt wouldn't normally say I put so much work into this. This is my passion project. People say, you know, go with your passion or whatever it is. And those are the two things I love, uh, I don't like Mondays because, uh, uh, because, you know, that just fits there. But so you say that, that uh, but Raven does love Mondays. That would be the best if they, like, uh, cause she, if she was making this either a TV show based on cat. So it's like one of those Christopher Guest things. She, Raven Simone is making a TV show based on Kathy. She loves it. So she actually loves Mondays. Because she loves getting back to work. She feels so fulfilled. Because this is 100%. This would be her production company. So we couldn't... Co- anyway. So yeah, you couldn't tell your aunt to just keep talking while you fall asleep. But obviously, that stuff is a big deal to her. With this podcast, you don't got to listen. You don't have that last part. You say, okay, Scooch, you're going to just talk about the exact thing. Yeah, but Okay. So that's one thing. You don't need to listen to me. And it's actually can be hard at first to, to accept that or understand. You might be wondering, when does the sleepy stuff start? When do I get to the point? What did I even get myself into? I'm very skeptical. Those are all natural ways to approach the show because this show is very different and strange. And the only thing I can say is give it a few tries. That's what most listeners say or like a just kind of have a loose grip or a loose focus. So that's that. Uh, and then what else? Oh, so this is a podcast you don't really listen to. It doesn't really actually put you to sleep either. Some of you might be like, yeah, no, duh. No, it's more here while you fall asleep. Uh, just like with our aunt example, you say, okay, I'm kind of barely listening to you. But I like that because you know, you're talking about these kind of sitcom setups and... Uh, okay. Yeah, I can, oh, I'm wondering, uh, well, where, where does she work in a, like a low rise or a high rise, a bungalow? I picture her in a bungalow. 
I think it'd be best if if uh, this show was sh- shot in a bungalow on uh, the b- behind the scenes of Universal Studios. Also, because that's one of my life goals, not to make it about me, but to just to, to work in one of the bungalows on the Universal Studios lot where I could just sit in a lawn chair all day and wave at the, uh, you see, Raven would be like, Scooter, where is the scripts for this season? And I'd say, sorry, Raven, I was, my arm was tired from waving at the uh, people on the tour. I br- sometimes I pretend I'm an animatronic and... Uh, I just pretend, you know, and then I do the robot and, uh, so yeah, I didn't, I didn't get any of my, okay, well, how are we going to keep, you can't keep sitting here entertaining. Well, maybe I could, maybe they could make that a job. So that, okay. So that part, that part, that part of the fan fiction didn't work out. I already lost my job on an imaginary show and it just happened to be Monday. So that would be one more. I'd say, well, now I hate Mondays because that was a day I lost my job where I made it my second job to sit and pretend, you know, interact with the guests at Universal Studios. Yeah, how, that'd be, that's quite an autobiography title. So, okay. Well, oh, so don't listen to me. No pressure to fall asleep. I'm going to be here for about an hour. So you could drift off at your leisure and then if you can't sleep or you wake up, I'm here for you. These show, these episodes are complete. So I'll be here to the very end to keep you company. So that's that. Uh, structure of the show can throw people off. Obviously, I've been talking here for about 15 minutes, and I haven't even got to the structure of the show. But that's kind of part of how the show works, actually. So it sh- starts off with a greeting. Friends beyond the binary, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, North Pole residents. Uh, so you know you're welcome. Then there's business. That's how we keep the show free. Then there's the intro. The intro goes from about minute six to minute 20. And it's where I kind of just go on and on and on about the podcast and slowly, barely get to the point. So, uh, so yeah, it's, uh, it's a bit different. Uh, the, oh, so, yeah, the, the intro, though, for new listeners, it introduces you to the show and you see it's a bit different. But for regular listeners, it kind of becomes part of your bedtime routine, unless you choose to skip it. You could always skip it and just set your thing for 20 minutes. Or on Patreon, we put out story-only versions of the episodes. So, but for most listeners, as they became a regular listener, first they started off, what, what is this, what the heck, or not for me, and then they come back, and then they become a regular listener. I guess that's the only way you become a regular since if you come back. Because some people just keep going. Uh, so, but then it, it just gives you, the whole idea of the show is to be part of your wind down, whether you're in bed or you're getting ready for bed, so you can have some distance from the day, so I can ease you into bedtime. So that's the intro. Then there's business, which is just structurally how the podcast stuff works. Then there'll be our story. And the story is uh, going to be the final episode of our holiday uh, soap opera. So that's exciting. Holy melodrama. Heavy on the sleepy stuff. Uh, so that'll be that. Then there's some thank yous at the end. So that's the structure of the show. And the reason I make the show is because you deserve a good night's sleep. That's why I make the podcast. Uh, you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve a place where you can rest and uh, get get some comfort. Uh, because if you get some sleep, uh, your, your world will be a better place. Our world will be a better place. That's amazing. And then what's the other last thing I was thinking of? Oh, the reason, other reason I make the show is because I've been there, tossing and turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep. Like I said, I got that. I've got that ten thousand hours down. I don't know. I was going to try to do some math, but I don't have any idea. I can't do. I can't. Like I have dyslexia, so I really can't do math in my head. So, because I said, well, how many hours? And and I'll just. You can let me know. But uh, like, uh, how long would I know? I've done ten thousand hours of overthinking. I'm just wondering if I've done a hundred thousand. But I don't you have 24 hours in a day, right? So 10, 10 days is 240 hours. 100 days is, uh, right, is 100 days 2,400 hours? Uh, 2,400 zero, zero is 2,400. 
thousand days, twenty four thousand. Oh yeah, I got. I probably got a hundred thousand hours of overthinking, and no problem. Maybe that's like uh, they say, Scoots, your hair is just like Malcolm Gladwell's, but straight and poofy. What happened? I say, hundred thousand hours. That's a hundred thousand hours of overthinking. How do you get that high pro glow? Well, I eat dog food. That's how I get it because it's a, that's where that adds from. They say, no, no, also from overthinking. I guess it stimulates some sort of, uh, I, I don't know. I just, when I, I had to make, I have to bring up uh, Gladwell's hair and my hair because uh, I like uh, That's the one place where it's, there is an, an not anti, but anti, whatever. Like uh, my hair is poofy and straight. Uh, and hair, his hair is beautifully lustrous, curly, and rich. Uh, mine is more like corn, like you, something you find not on a human, like you'd find on an animal. Like and I, I'm not joking. That's why I say I have high pro glow. So anyway, I'm glad you're here. Is my my main point. I'm sorry I'm laughing. It's just uh, when things keep going far afield, like I'm literally saying, okay, let's bring it back here, and then my brain says, what about that? And then it says, "Whoa, there's Mal." It shows me Malcolm Gladwell's headshot, and I say, "Well, I got to look at the hat." So I'm glad you're here. Like I said, like a lot of listeners say, give it a few, this show a few tries. You could give up on it. it; it does not work for everybody. But I really hope it works for you. So that's why I say, give it a few tries, because hopefully, like I said, you deserve a good night's sleep. You deserve something that's gonna barely put a smile on your face. I mean, if you're looking for something more than that, then this might not be. You say, this podcast is uh, something I feel very ambivalent about, and I, that's why I love it. So I'm glad you're here. I really appreciate you coming by. I work very hard. I yearn and I strive. And here's a couple of ways I'm able to bring you this show twice a week. All right, everybody. It's time to talk about a new sponsor, but it's a sponsor I've been using for a long time, and that's Headspace. We all know life can be stressful even under normal circumstances, but 2020 has challenged even the most difficult times of life. You need stress relief that goes beyond quick fixes, and that's Headspace. Headspace is one of the only meditation apps advancing the field of mindfulness and meditation through clinically validated research and can reduce stress, improve sleep, boost focus, and increase your overall sense of well-being. And 2020 has been the year of Headspace. Actually, at the beginning of 2020, we had some family stuff going on, and Sophia and I started to work Headspace into our nightly routine. Father and daughter meditating together. Well, father, daughter, and Andy, who you'll get to know when you download Headspace. Uh, we really relied on Andy night after night to help us uh, practice mindfulness. And to add tools to our toolbox, we've used it almost every single night of uh, 2020. And I laugh because we had a really long streak going, over 180 days. And uh, then I forgot one night when Sophia wasn't at my house when I used Headspace by myself, I was supposed to use it. And uh, I just skipped that one night. So sorry, Sophia. But Headspace has really, really made a difference in my year. It's made 2020 much more manageable. And it's about having those tools in your toolbox. It's about living in the present moment. It's about giving something to yourself, something that works. So do not pause. I, I want you to do this right now. I want you to go to headspace.com slash sleep with me for a free one month trial. So pretty much every listener should do this. I should hear from everyone because that's the best deal they offer right now. Free. It's a free one month trial by going to headspace.com slash sleep with me me and then reach out to me. Let me know you got the free trial going and then I can tell you about some of the different meditations and the different courses we took over this year. Some of the ones we really, really love. So it's headspace.com slash sleep with me and get it. It's free. Get over there. Start it. You deserve it. Uh, thanks everybody. Hey everybody, it's Scoots here and I'm here to talk about therapy. I work with a licensed professional therapist uh, on a regular basis and it has been so beneficial in my life. And 
And if you're out there thinking about it, you know, you're, you're dealing with something, you're feeling overwhelmed, maybe it's anxiety, maybe you just want to make some changes in your life and you want to have someone there to listen and to help you with issues. A professional therapist is an amazing, for me, life-changing resource. So whatever it is, anxiety, grief, depression, relationships, uh, sleep, anything you're dealing with, a licensed professional therapist can help. And with BetterHelp, all you do is simply fill out a questionnaire to help assess your basic needs, and then you get matched with your counselor in under 48 hours. From there, you could easily schedule secure video or phone sessions, plus exchange unlimited messages to communicate with your therapist at your convenience. And everything you share is confidential. If for any reason you're unhappy with your counselor, you can request a new one at any time at no additional charge. So you can find someone you feel good with, which is just another important part of the process. It's just another safe place for you to find. Join the 1 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced BetterHelp counselor. BetterHelp is an affordable option for our listeners and get 10% off your first month with the discount code SLEEPWITHME. That's one word, SLEEPWITHME. Get started today at B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com. That's betterhelp.com slash sleepwithme. Talk to a therapist online and get help. BetterHelp.com slash sleep with me for 10% off your first month. Thanks, everybody. All right, everybody. Welcome to our episodically modular holiday series conclusion. As the North Pole turns with a touch of seriality that's uh, undone because we cover everything at the beginning of every episode. But with a, this is a soap opera, so it's kind of the kind of, th- it's kind of, the, it's kind of the kind of thing that uh, gets, it gets handled, uh, b- b- uh, b- because it's kind of always, as the North Pole turns, uh, technically, as the world turns underneath the North Pole, but it's still turning up there. I mean, actually, it's turning at a different, I, I, mean, I, mean, I don't know anything about the glo- like, it's a, are they turning at the same speed, even though the radius is smaller? I got to put some, I got to buy a globe and, and get this, get to the bottom of this. So I'm going to turn things over to uh, the, the person reporting on tonight's episode, uh, Claude Neon. Claude Neon here, and I'm just trying to review everything that's happened so far before we head head off and I step into this group with Balsamica and the rest of the North Pole elves here. So I arrived at the North Pole uh, with the task, I was assigned the task of clearing the name of Abies, uh, who stands, uh, stood, I'm not even sure, uh, accused of lying to Santa Claus, which is a, 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 a something that gets, can get you banned permanently, exiled from the North Pole. One of the one of the worst things that can happen to a North Pole elf. So, I came to collect information uh, to get to the bottom of things with Ab's clear Ab's name. Uh, well, that's what I was hoping to do, and my client was pretty sure that Ab's was innocent of lying to Santa Claus. And and I actually, huh? I didn't even think about this, uh, but we'll, well, we'll get to it. Because it, when I arrived, right around the time I arrived, there was already a lot going on here at the North Pole, other than the preparations for the holiday season, which were just completed, uh, which we would have thought, okay, pro- most problems solved. There's still a lot of interpersonal or inner elven you know, things to solve. Uh, but right leading up to the fi- finalizing of the holiday preparations, Procera, another North Pole elf, uh, had uh, there was a new facility for solid-state electronic toy production here in the North Pole. And not all the elves, uh, the changes in toy production, you know, just like they've impacted the world here in the 1990s or 80s, wherever, what I, I, I'm losing track, 80s, 1980s. Uh, I'm already thinking about those 90s. I'm sure they're going to be, I don't know what they'll be like, but hopefully they'll still have neon and flat, fat shoelaces because those are two of my favorite things. 
Uh, but so not all the elves were happy because they said, what are we making electronic toys? These are just circuits and uh, things. These are easily replaceable or easily automated. What, what's going to be the future of the elves? And with globalization, the elves said, what, uh, and uh, what do you call it? Free, you know, quote unquote, free markets. You know, the elves said, is this, it was a lot of strong feelings. Now, Procera had some of the strongest feelings we observed because Procera used some different designs to eliminate uh, the uh, the new facility from existence uh, by way of glacier and chasm. And because of that... Uh, Glacier, oh, because of the facility was gone. Also, a lot of those toys had been scheduled to go out. Uh, of course, there's a lot of strong feelings about that. And I'm not, you know, I'm not dealing with the implications of what happened. It, but there was also some other feeling of uh, the, that something else was at play here with uh, ABs and now Procera's actions. And what we discovered was that uh, that one Santa Claus. So we 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 all banded together. Even I, uh, you know, part of us researching, saying, "Okay, I got to clear Abby's name." But to, to to pitch in to make sure there was enough toys to be delivered on the holiday, you know, the evenings of the holidays. Uh, and we all know not every, you know, that, that again, the, the reality of the 1980s is not every child gets a toy from Santa Claus. It's more partial, partially symbolic, partially real. And also that a lot of people don't know this, but we talked about it, is that the elves are actually like also employed by some of the toy manufacturers as part of a, a set of accords reached by Engelmanni. Another one of these figures here. Now, we also learned that Engelmanni was a half-elf, uh, which we did not know at the time. Engelmanni's child, Atlantica, is a quarter-elf, I guess, technically. Their partner is uh, Depiana. i got to look at my notes here. But uh, the, the, one of the, the genius behind Solid State, uh, or one of them, or at least uh, the head elf, uh, in charge of solid state electronic production. And then we had Procera. Everyone was helping, and uh, even ABs, because ABs and Procera also had very high level elves. Uh, we also learned that after we got the sleigh ready, oh, the reason ABs, oh, also ABs was accused of lying to Santa Claus in relation to the ABs and Mrs. Claus. Uh, were uh, underneath the mistletoe one night. Uh, but we also learned, after we got the sleigh lo loaded, unfortunately, you know you have to do that a, a few weeks before the holidays. Uh, what happened was we also learned that the person we thought was Santa Claus, who had be been behaving strangely maybe for years, we just don't know, hopped in the sleigh and took off with it, uh, with all the toys, meaning we have a backup sleigh. Uh, so there's a sleigh. Uh, it, it's not like in the movies. There's like a, a front sleigh that's driven by the a combination of reindeer and an ion, ion engine. I, I think that's what it's called. But there's also the, 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 uh, the cargo, which is attached to the sleigh, just like a train a bit. So we have a backup sleigh that was actually circling the area looking for Santa once we realized that Santa was not, uh, like, because it has, a, what do you call that thing, infrared. So we, we, we're we going to try to, now, the good thing about an ion engine or ionic engine is it needs to, it slowly builds up speed by ejecting ions. I'm not positive on that, Uh at a certain altitude, so, so so the 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 EVIL Santa is somewhere circling the North Pole, building up speed, and we're going to try to get in this backup sleigh and catch up with Santa to save Christmas, to get those presents, and to save the holiday season. 
So I guess the question is, can, can everybody's returning now uh, because we we all had, and I was lucky, I already had a snowsuit on. They call them Santa suits uh, so they could stay warm. Even though there's heaters, you got to have a, in case you say, well, we got to stop and get in and out. So all the elves are here. And again, the elven leadership uh, is more or less the people. Oh, also, I have introduced you to, to introduce you to Balsamica. Balsamica, my understanding is, has been my assistant in these investigations, a somewhat an independent assistant or someone I'm working with. Uh, Balsamica standing, looking back, and me mentioning for me to get over so I can listen in to all the discussions, or uh, that we all can hear them. But Balsamic is kind of in charge of melodrama in the North Pole, which I think it keeps things, keeps people's, uh, it's an intense work environment up here. So the uh, processing of melodrama, I don't know, I mean, I'm, I'm surprised it's a job, but it's a bit like a, a community service member report. I don't know. So yeah, I've got to get, okay. They're talking about who's going to drive the sleigh and everybody. Okay. Hello. Hello. Okay. You were saying, okay. Yeah. So it's, it's me, Engelmani. So, I mean, I'm not trying to say that I, I should drive it, but Procera and Abies can't drive because we just don't have a full, you can't run the sleigh just because you're directly connected to the events that, and I guess in some sense you could say I'm indirectly connected, but you were both directly connected to the events that made this uh, secondary Santa Claus take off with the sleigh. So for us to let you drive the sleigh would just be, oh, hi, hey, hey, uh, Claude, we were just discussing who should drive the sleigh. And I was saying not Procera and not uh, Abies just because it's not a good idea. Just in case, you know, we don't want to give you the reins of the last chance I have, uh, we have to save Christmas. Oh, that's interesting that you said that, 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 that yeah, that, oh, it just, I know you know, might not recognize us in our snowsuits, uh, Claude. I'm Procera. What's your motivation, though, Engelmani, to drive? I mean, how can we trust you since your your child's partner is behind the, the like you you're the one you're indirectly involved in this. Like, what if you have a plan to to make it because you would just want to replace all the elves with technology? Well, that's not actually true, Procera. I'm trying to, and again, I know it's here's the reason, real reason why. You know, as I revealed in great dramatic fashion recently, that I'm only part elf and I'm not a hundred. I'm fifty percent elf, and and that is, you know, that's probably part of why I've gone in this journey dealing with so many humans. And as you know, Santa Claus is part human. Uh, we're all human. We don't know the answer to that. It just looks like a human. And since Santa normally drives the sleigh, I think it would be best if someone that has a human connection to humanity, a physical connection, I think just the sleigh may respond better. We don't really know. We don't drive a lot of sleighs, you know. And I think because my motivations are questioned by everyone, uh, I'm actually more trustworthy and I would say that you, maybe Procera and Abies, you could maybe you could keep an eye on me, right? And then I have my uh, child, Atlantica, here. Atlantica, you could sit next to me as your quarter human. I think, I don't know. I guess I don't understand it after that. Uh, How does everybody feel about that? Well, uh, this is Atlantica speaking. Thank you, uh, Ingomani. Thank you, parent of mine. I think that the uh, way we should sit is that you should drive. I think as everyone's in agreement, that was a powerful uh, argument you made, mostly just due to that, you being human. Also, you have, you, you, you've driven the sleigh. Not, not many of us have. So that makes sense. But I, would, I don't think I should sit next to you. I think Depeana should sit next to you. 
my beloved Depeana, then I'll sit next to Depeana, and then Abe should sit next to me. Okay, well, this is Depeana. Why, why wouldn't you sit next? Why would Abe's? That's a lot of people for the front of the sleigh. Well, yeah, we'll be snu- we'll be snuggled in. But I think it be because uh, Abe's uh, should be next to me. You should be next to to, to Engelmani. Then you're then I'm still next to you. So don't worry. But then you you know you have the most techno you have the most technological skills. So let's just be honest. And this could be a technological situation. Also, me, 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 not everybody knows this. Uh, but I just happen to know that Abe's has the best just, uh, eyesight in the North Pole. And if we're going to be looking for this sleigh visually, you know, because Ru- hopefully we'll be able to spot Rudolph's nose, that, uh, that the, then, then Abe's would be the one, because they remember that uh, the Onyx engine goes in a counterclockwise uh Right, counterclockwise orbit uh, or, or circle, and uh, so that that's why. Well, my my dear, how do you know so much about AB's sites? Oh, hey, th- this is AB's here. That does sound good. I mean, we'll all fit in. The, it'll be you know, it'll be close. We'll be close to one another. So I'll be close to Atlantica. You'll be close to Atlantica, uh, Depeana. Lanico will be close to me and to you, and then you'll be close to Engelmani, but you're also good with tech. And then, you know, you, you and Lanica, you know, if Lanica did need to take over the sleigh, they'd be right there to do it. And I think it'd be nice uh, to sit next to, I mean, it'd be nice for me because I do have the best eyesight, uh, yeah, I've seen things across rooms, uh, eyes I would never forget, uh, cheeks that I would never forget across the room, across the workplace. Uh, and so, yeah, I, I, uh, I am, I'm, I mean, what are you, are you talking about, uh, Mrs. Claus or Atlantica, ABC? Because this is just not a... I'm just talking about keeping an eye out for Rudolph's nose. Okay, well, that's fine. But then, so then the back, we would have uh, uh, Claude Neon, Balsamica, and Procera. Uh, Mrs. Claus, you should probably stay behind here. And then we'll, we, we should probably get moving. Should it, Does that sound equitable to everybody? Does anybody have an objection to the seating arrangements? The Procera, you could sit between Balsamica and uh, Claude Neon, and that way, uh, you know, just in case you, you, there's something else going on, or you could, because we need you to help us. Uh, so if you're not going to help us uh, save Christmas uh, in the holiday season, please let us know. No, I'm. I, this is Procera. Of course, I, I like again. I'm just saying my name first for Claude Neon's sake. But uh, yeah, I would. Uh, yeah, this is fine. Let's. I think we should get going because I, yeah, I want to save Christmas. Uh, but uh, so let's all get in the sleigh and let's go. Okay, Mrs. Goss, you stay here. Uh, this is balsamic could taking over. Everybody load up. I think this is good. Claude, this is good. Uh, and I think everybody's here. Uh, and we're taking off, regaining. So, so we should go just so Claude knows this is balsamic talking. We should hit, uh, how this is now, this is a backup sleigh, but it doesn't have, uh, an ion engine. So technically, if Santa in the, the current sleigh or whatever we're calling this uh, other Santa uh, does reach speed, we would never be able to catch them because this is the older model sleigh. It doesn't have an ionic engine. It relies on other technology and uh, a lot more reindeer. Yeah, that's that's correct, Balsamica. But we have all we need to do, and actually, it's a faster sleigh. 
So we just have to get to the get to altitude. Oh boy, though it's very uh, cloudy at altitude, so we're not going to be able to see. We can't see anything. And uh, unfortunately, this has a radar, but not. Uh, we won't be able to pick up the sleigh. <laughs> the one thing that we won't get on the radar is the sleigh. You know, it's just for other aircraft and and birds. Uh, so what we'll have to do is uh, we're going to have to trust uh, AB's eyesight, uh, and uh, we we we're at altitude though. We're, we're so. Yeah, we. I mean, we should be following. It's a very so. Yeah, just to, to narrate everything. This is Ingelmani, uh, Claude. So we should be able to complete the circle. I, I, I have the things that have nearly full throttle, throttle. I'm ready to pull back though, in case we see the sleigh. It's a good thing this has a reverse brake. So if we do catch up on uh, the the sleigh, it will. Uh, you know, now that we're up here, I mean, we got to do a few circles. Uh, but, uh, sooner or later, we'll catch up or encounter it because we'll either, uh, you know, could Pro Sarah, could you keep an eye on the rear? Because it could, the sleigh could appear behind us. So you'd be able to see Rudolph's nose, oh so bright, uh, guiding false Santa's sleigh tonight. But I really been thinking about this the fact that I'm only like I'm all, I'm not a, like it's I'm just having a tough time. I mean, not having a tough time driving the sleigh, but I am having a tough time processing my existence here because I say, wait a second, I'm. Uh, you mean it's just a lot of meaning? I'm having trouble with it. I guess I, I don't know how else to put it. It, it, it. Suddenly, I'm thinking, what does it mean to be me? If, uh, like, but that I'm, I'm not, a, like, has, how has that guided my choices? So I don't know. I'm thinking a lot about that. And I could just use, uh, oh, thank you, Atlantica, for putting your arm around me. A child, a sweet child of mine. Oh, thank you, Balsamica, for putting your hand on my shoulder from behind me. Thank you. It's That's very calming. Still misty up here. Abies, have you seen anything uh, bright? Uh, no, as a matter of fact, I have not seen anything bright. And you know, not it. Never. The only thing I've seen as bright as Rudolph's nose is a twinkle in Atlantica's eye, and uh, uh, you know, at the great snowball we had when we were children. Okay, did you notice that pause, ABs? We're, 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 it's probably not the best time for a trip down memory lane. Yeah, especially with my partner, uh, ABs. Well, it's okay. Just go ahead, ABs. What were you saying about my eyes? Well, what I was thinking is that uh, when I would lose sight of your eyes, it would be when you closed your eyes uh, and blinked. Uh, or, you know, you closed your eyes and looked away. Or then, you know, when we, you know, you ended up uh, living and choosing Depeana. And, you know, then I didn't see your eyes. You know, I, I see your eyes from far away, but it, was at a di you know, it wasn't at the snowball. And, you know, it just had a different tone to me of seeing your eyes in that situation versus the current situation. And that fact, uh, you know, I guess has driven me uh, to uh, drove me into the arms of uh, Mrs. Kloss. Uh, and I've just been thinking a lot about that. And, and the fact that, you know, Mrs. Kloss, like, and I, we were just, uh, it wasn't love. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a different kind of love is what I'm saying to everyone here wasn't a love born out of passion or love born out of shared interest. Uh, it was the kind of love you see when two leaves are floating in a river uh, and the river is picking up speed, but the leaves are moist and they touch one another and they stick together and they traverse part of the river together. Maybe a part of the river that's uh, where the speed picks up 
And I think that part of the river for Mrs. Kloss is now what we're seeing. Uh, did we ask Mrs. Kloss if uh, she knew that Santa, this wasn't the real Santa Claus? I think uh, my conversations with her led to, lead me to think, no, that uh, she was just like Santa had changed. And maybe Santa's, the, the joy of the season had drained out of Santa's heart. Uh, and, you know, that's how we became together uh, to, to, to say, well, it's nav- we've encountered one another. And we're sharing this drifting feeling. If we could just connect for a while in this river, we wouldn't have to. But sometimes it's just natural. Like I said, just the leaves come, come in contact with one another. And there just happens to be some sort of attraction. And some would say it was a surface attraction. And some would not. Uh, and uh, But uh, my point being is that I believe that uh, what I'm saying is that I have not seen the sleigh. And my eyesight is so good in my memory that I feel like we're covering the same and I've been watching the maps out of the corner of our eye, my eye. This is Ingomani. I don't mean to interrupt you, but I'm really relating with what you're saying from a different perspective because I'm I'm part human and part elf. Uh, and while I know the ages don't line up uh, and the situation doesn't line up, I have to start to wonder where, whence I came, you know, you know, I'm going through this thing and wondering where, you know, maybe this is where I feel adrift uh, and why I've always tried to connect elves and humans together. Is it what I've always wanted for myself or is it what I've wanted because I've felt uh, something empty or missing inside me? And, you know, I've tried to be the best parent I could at Lanka, and I know I've been distracted sometimes, and I travel a lot more than most elven parents, and I've relied on you for not just support, but for, you know, like you've been a trusted advisor of mine. But now I'm calling into question my questionable motivations. Uh, but I, then at the same time, even though I'm talking and driving a sleigh at an incredible speed here, through a snowstorm and mystic, misty sky, uh, the fact of the matter is that I, I'm, I guess I'm lost in another way. Oh, but what you were going to say something about, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, A.B., so just uh, now you got me thinking about things I've been thinking about, but more about things I've been feeling and wondering which comes first. Well, what I was going to say was we haven't seen Rudolph's nose, which is pretty much impossible, even in this level of mist and snow. And so what I'm probably saying is that the, the, the whatever Santa non-Santa would have covered Rudolph's nose uh, knowing we would be in pursuit. So uh, that's not a good sign. Okay, but this is the beyond here, and I'm really having feelings myself about what you've been saying. But I have to put my feelings aside because I do want to say that I had installed LED lights on the rear of the new sleigh, and we were still testing them out. Uh, and I just remembered that we have a uh, we, we we did offer a way to to activate them remotely. And the fact of the matter is that uh, that they should be. Like, we should be able to turn them on uh, on the other sleigh. They're like brake lights on a car. They refer, they refer to be there for where Rudolph's nose wasn't. And also, they were just going to be there for cool when we do more of the Goodwill tours. We thought it'd be cool to have brake lights. Uh, break for, I break for, remember when that I break for Santa uh, thing was popular? Oh, I'm sorry, Debbie Anna. Uh, 
I think it, like I, 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 this is a, a Procera. I remember that remote control and it's, it's, uh, underneath. I, I kicked it a few times though. Okay. Well, could you crawl under, did, did you, let me take a, it's not, oh boy. Yeah. We're going to have to, I can fix this though. I need your help, uh, Procera. In Atlantica, I probably need your help too. Okay. What do you need? Well, I don't know because I, I just need some clarity, I guess, uh, uh, of what, what, what does all this mean? Okay. Well, maybe it means, uh, then I'm good. You're having, I'm glad you're having feelings, uh, about it, what Abies was saying and the fact that Abies and I are sitting next to each other too. Maybe that's a good thing, huh? So maybe we should get we should get this resolved as soon as we can. Oh, okay, yeah, let's do that. Uh, we, okay, Procera, can you um, hold that red red thing, that red wire there? Okay, now I'm gonna hold this green and green wire, and then that purple one. Okay, you hold the blue one. Now we're gonna put that. Hold, hold, we got It looks like the connect. You just broke the connections. So we're going to hold all four of these wires to the thing, and the lights should go on. So everybody else, keep your eyes peeled. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, the, uh, the, the, well, the AB's here. I see the lights uh, in. Uh, I see the, I see the tail lights. So wow, those are powerful. LEDs are more powerful than Rudolph's nose. I would have never thought of that. Uh, yeah, combined, they are more powerful than Rudolph's nose. Uh, but, oh, so wh wh where's, uh, where's the sleigh? Well, what's interesting is that it's about uh, uh, 300 yards below us. Uh, and, oh, so that Santa knew we were, wait a second, does anybody smell any ion in the air? I don't even know what ion smells like. Neither do I. Neither do I. Well, I could tell you that it doesn't smell like uh, ion up here. So uh, that means the ion engine is going, and, and the sand is going at a different level. Do you think that the, the Santa would have thought we would have come up here and then just circled, and then, uh, and then, what, what do you, what do you think? Like, like it just spun our wheels. Yeah, I guess so. But so where's okay? So now, okay, Engelmani, where are we? Okay, yeah, we should be at near full ionic speed. If if it was uh, like right now would be when the sleigh would have been starting its uh, larger circles and it would be impossible for this sleigh to keep up with it. It hasn't reached full speed, you know, for, for, for the deliveries, but it has reached a speed, or it should have, but w according to the lights and what I'm seeing is it's going at the same speed. It's just at a cruising speed and at a cruising altitude, not the ionic uh, impulse or whatever altitude. So does anybody have any thoughts? Uh, Procera and Engelmont, or Procera and Depeana, you get better start keep hanging on to those. Uh, yeah, well, I'm under here. I don't know if you can hear me under the seat. This is Procera. So you're saying that this, the, 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 the alternate Santa is at an at a altitude just circling. I would presume that uh, Santa would think it would lose that we'd just give up, and then we'd just give up on the holidays. Uh, so, oh, oh, ABC here. The Santa is now changing directions and not circling anymore, but heading off. Uh, I don't know if it we're headed if it, if it's the uh, Santa's heading north, south, east, or west. Okay, well, maybe, Engelmani, can you follow at a safe distance? Yeah, I can stay above uh, Santa. There's no way this, does, this doesn't this does have any lights or LEDs, right, uh, Depeana? No, yeah, I'm just holding things down here. Um, 
You know, the other thing you could do is check the uh, thermal images. Remember, we had Santa Claus and another person, or what we're assuming is Santa Claus and another person. See if uh, I'm just, you know, guessing that that could be where, you, oh, you're right, Depeana. That's beyond the crystal forest. Uh, it's inside the crystal forest where that, uh, this, uh, like the two, like there shouldn't have been any heat signatures, but there's two heat signatures somewhere in the crystal forest. And this Santa, this sleigh seems to be headed in that direction. Wow. So that, like, so we're following it though, right? We are following it. Uh, so the Santa was going to, now the crystal forest is a place we've never been allowed. Yeah. I mean, mostly because it's just a crystal forest. There's a lot of, uh, icicles saying it's just not a good idea that's why people think it's a legend it's just icicles oh wow i never knew that i thought there was probably like frost giants or something no there's no such thing as frost giants uh just you know frost the frost is real okay well it looks like uh we could stay if we stay at this altitude can we keep following well, I guess we don't even need to. It looks like those lights are headed right towards those two thermal heat signatures uh, from the uh, thermal imaging. So what are we going to do now? I don't mean to correct Ingomani, but it's uh, infrared, not thermal imaging. Okay, thank you for thanks for correcting me. Thanks. We can't imagine why my child would ever get... Uh, distracted from you when you're correcting everybody okay well why don't, wait, 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 here's a suggestion this is uh this is uh, uh, pro sarah here why don't you land uh look at the now we're coming in where we can we can oh uh i was gonna say circle and land over there but it looks like the sand is looking right up at us and waving us in so if we thought that uh, we were going to lose the Santa, what are we going to do when we get down there? Oh, uh, well, I guess we'll talk to the Santa. I don't know. Okay, yeah, it looks like that Santa is uh, waiting for us and now going towards the cabin as we land and walking inside. And holding the door for us, but it's one of those two door places, so not letting any hot air out of the cabin. Okay, here's an idea though. Claude, uh, why don't you walk a little bit slower than all of us? Uh, Claude, do you have you ever talked to reindeer before? Like, talk to the reindeer because, uh, I don't think this is Santa knows that the reindeer can communicate with the squirrels. And don't go too slow, Claude. Just tell the reindeer to de detach the sleigh, the presents from the sleigh. You know, ask the squirrels and the other forest friends to come for your help. Uh, we'll go inside and see what this, uh, like, act like we're just uh, acquiescing Go along with what the Santa says, and then you do you understand, Claude? Go ahead, go ahead. Hey, Ray, hey, Rudolph, uh, Dasher, Dancer, Donner, Blitzen, Comet, Cupid, Donder, Blitzen, Carmella. Uh, I'd, actually, I don't know everybody else's names. It seems like uh, because, uh, but uh, I don't know if you heard that. But we we need you to do. We're going to go inside and distract this uh, Alt Santa. And we need you to de detach. We need you to fly the the all of the the sleigh we were in, and the presents uh, back uh, to 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 where uh, Mrs. Colossus is, and keep it safe and save Christmas. Uh, if that would be be good, could you do just no? Okay, we're just gonna go inside. Uh, oh, sorry. I'm just. Uh, I'm not a. Uh, how you doing? I thought you were Santa Claus. Turns out you're... Who are you? Come inside, please, Claude. Uh, 
Well, you, you, but you're not, are you sane or not? Uh, come inside, Claude. Uh, let's all talk. Oh, look, there's Santa Claus and Pro, Pro, Sarah, Pro, Sarah, another Pro Sarah? What's happening here? Sit down, everyone. Uh, it's I, who, who you once thought was Santa Claus. Now, my name's not Jack Skellington, but, uh, you might have said, what are you doing, trying to ruin Christmas? And I understand how you feel that way, but I've led you here, and uh, I wanted one of you or two of you to find your way here, because you might say, what are you doing? You've been uh, imitating Santa, keeping Santa and another pro Sarah here in a cabin, and I'd say, yeah, I'm a, I'm, I've been a confused man. I was a mall Santa. So I'm not Santa's twin. I am just look a lot like Santa. And some would say my choices are E-V-I-L. But, I, you know, when I was a mall Santa, we had uh, working for us uh, a real elf. I didn't know it at the time. At first, uh, someone cast out from the North Pole for lying to Santa. And that elf and I fell in love, uh, and eventually that elf, uh, earned their way back to the North Pole, uh, because it was only a partial ban and ended up, uh, the parent of some other, you know, a, a famous neon, uh, cleared their name, but, uh, you know, I was down there, I'm not well, like, uh, I, 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 I missed them, and I wanted to come back. And they said, no humans at the North Pole. Uh, and actually, they didn't really, whatever. Uh, so I'm, I'm your father, uh, Ingomani, and uh, I'm your grandparent, uh, Atlantica. And also, after I was a mall Santa, I ended up owning the malls. And then I, you know, I also owned one of the great Tory conglomerates. Uh, or I did, I sold it all to become a, to fund my plan to take over for Santa. Then I realized how much of work it was over the past few years. Uh, and, uh, you know, just uh, how tiring it was, you know, keeping looking like Santa. I mean, I naturally looked exactly like Santa. We're not twins, you know, but that happens. People look like one another. And when I learned the the elf that I loved wasn't here at the North Pole, uh, I thought maybe I would work up the courage to, to, to introduce myself to you in Ingomani and Atlantica. But I found by imitating Santa that I had some contact with you. But in the end, it ended up being unfulfilling. Uh, you know, working with uh, with all of you under false pretenses. And while it was exciting to pretend I was Santa, especially the past few holidays, you know, it wasn't easy. And uh, wasn't, you know, in the end, it wasn't fulfilling at all. And uh, I've kept Santa here. With pre Sarah, pro Sarah's twin. So pro Sarah does have a twin, pre Sarah. Uh, and they've been living here for years, you know, because you can't get, you can't leave the crystal forest. It's actually true. And they were smart enough to stay here. But, you know, I kept, uh, kept them happy and entertained and all that. Uh, so I don't know if pre Sarah or Santa, you want to say anything. Yeah, but that's why I'm here, and I guess I'm sorry. I just did it for love, love of a child and a grandchild and the confused love of the holiday season. And, uh, yeah, I guess it's just a human, and, I mean, I'm only human. Wow, so you're my pa one of my parents. Uh, well, it's good to meet you. I'm Ingelmani. Uh you could call me Bert, actually. I go by Bert uh, when I'm not. I mean, I forgot my name for a little while. Otherwise, I would have said, it's me, your father, Bert. Uh, well, here in the North Pole, we don't use those terms, uh, Bert. Uh, but uh, I could say you're my parental figure. Okay, that's fine. 
I mean, you use it for Santa and Mrs. Claus, though. Well, you're no Santa, Bert. Uh, but maybe that's good. Maybe you could start. Uh, you apologized. Uh, so maybe we could go and get to know one another. Lanica, what do you think? I think it, I think it, uh, Depeon and I need to talk uh, and spend some time reconnecting the two of us We, we uh, and rekindling. Uh, I notice this uh, cabin has multiple rooms, so, so we want to have a private discussion. And uh, Abies, maybe there, maybe you could uh, st st stay near the room, uh, depending on how our discussion goes. Cause sometimes the leaves float uh, in different directions, and and sometimes they end up together. Okay, that's confusing. Pre Sarah, I'm pro Sarah. You're my twin sister. What are you doing here? And Santa, how's everything going? Ho ho ho! It's uh, going. It's uh, we've adjusted. Uh, uh, but I knew in my heart uh, you all would be here. And Pre Sarah was part of. Uh, uh, well, Pre Sarah, you might as well tell everybody now. Yeah, well, Bert didn't 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 really realize this, or that uh, Bree Sarah did finally find a way out of the crystal forest and found me, and we worked out this plan, which involved an over the top plan. Also, just so you know, the companies Bert owned were mostly solid state companies, so some of it was uh, Bert. No offense. Also, you you when you sold them, they were for the anyway. Not important. And so we uh, came up with this plan to get you here to rescue Santa and, you know, save the holiday season and all that. Um, but what you should all know is that, uh, you know, this hasn't been easy for Santa. Being away from Mrs. Claus and knowing Mrs. You know, this has just not been easy. Santa kind of... Still could see everything. Oh, Abyss isn't even in the room anymore. And so Santa's decided, and uh, there's one other person that knew about all this. So why don't you kind of tell everybody, everything, finish it off, Balsamica? Yeah, so, uh, well, the, yeah, so everybody should know that's still listening, including you, Claude, that this was part of a plan that I was also a part of. And, uh, I was the one that gave Bert the idea, uh, to, uh, that ABs, you know, that brought everything to Bert's attention. I also moved to the, you know, I said, what, why don't you, do, don't you ever check your mistletoe, Bert? And he said, ho, 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 uh, who would be checking my mistletoe? But as I've been working with pre Sarah and pro Sarah to, uh, eventually, Save Christmas and get Santa and re-replace Bird wasn't easy because Bird controls a lot of the stuff that's essential to Christmas. And our fear was that if Christmas was fully automated, Bert would have total power. And even though it was starting to be empty for Bert, that could be even worse because what if Bert just uh, rose to the level of Santa Claus and then wasn't interested? but took all of the power that came with being Santa Claus. Uh, what would that mean for Christmas if Bert just walked away and left the, the automatic reins? No more reindeer, no more elves making toys. So we knew we had to do a slow plan. The problem was when we were doing the slow plan, Santa Claus, uh, the real Santa Claus, also... Uh, changed priorities and we know that the role doesn't change very often but claude we brought you here because it's time for a change not right now we got to get things back in order at the north pole this season the real santa will be back uh santa can you give us a ho 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 yeah thanks uh balsamica Sarah and pro Sarah and i work together in I'm going to give it a few more holiday seasons, but uh, I think that it's time for me to start looking at being replaced by somebody. A new, 
Claus uh, should come into being and, you know, not someone that's, uh, you know, someone that we find. We search the world and we're going to need your help uh, telling that story, Claude. There could be other stories of the holiday seasons that haven't been told that you may need to tell, Claude. So we're going to have to count on you as a reporter uh, to tell our tales. But I think that's the end of this tale. Ho, 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 ho. This will be the first, you know, this will be the holiday I'm back. But I think we should all rest now and get comfortable. Then we'll figure out, Bert. We know that the the reindeer have returned, to, to, so everything else is on schedule again. So let's just get comfortable and rest and, uh, you know, know all will be well, uh, that all will be well. And even though there's a lot of melodrama, probably most of it not necessary, if we would have just communicated and said exactly what we wanted or found out, oh, that's what I really want, uh, we could have just asked. But that's not what makes humans humans or elves elves, is it, uh, we all need to rest. We know that much. Uh, so let's rest together and have a joyous uh, season or more find a little joy. We don't have, you know, this is my ho, ho, ho this year. And maybe you could, maybe you could find yours right on that level. It's okay to only have, say, well, you yeah, know, maybe I'll find some joy on the inside and some self-soothing and say, yeah, maybe, uh, this is my level of ho, ho, ho. Uh, happy holidays, everybody. Good night. All right. I want to thank everybody that came, became a patron recently. I want to thank Carrie, uh, Gemma, and Kat, uh, Kelly, David, and Garrett. Uh, thank you. Thanks, 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 and good night. Jennifer, Leanne, and Margaret. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Amelia, Sandy, and Jackson, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sophie, Rachel, and Lucia, thank you, thanks, 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 and good night. Miss Uwu, uh, Mallory, and Nancy Drew, too, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Rachel, Katie, and Courtney, thanks, thanks, and good night. Rochelle, Janet, and Kate, thank you, thanks, and good night. Becky, Rebecca M, and Rebecca R, thanks, 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 and good night. India, Allison, Kim, thanks, 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 and good night. Bethany, Nicola, and Miss Lulu, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Matt, Sandra, and Sarah, thank you, thanks, and good night. Katie, Lexi, and Ann, thanks, 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 and good night. Uh, Erica, Antonia, and Ellie, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. David. Junior and Annie, thanks, thanks, and good night. Chris, Sarah, and Drusilla, thanks, thanks, and good night. Good night. Timothy, Alicia, and Travis, thanks, thanks, and good night. And uh, Caitlin and Alicia, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, thanks, and good night for supporting the show. So, even we exist for free podcasts because of the patrons and the people that support the sponsors. And we grow as this podcast by people just spreading the word when they have a chance. So thank you so much for that. And, uh, yeah, thanks. It's good to say good night to you one more time, huh? Thanks so much and good night. Hey, everybody, Scoots here tucking you in and letting you know uh, if you're listening and you're saying, you know, I want a more comfortable way to listen to Sleep With Me, but I also want the Sleep With Me logo on it. You could check out our Sleep Phones merch store at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleepphones. It's all Sleep Phones, the whole lineup uh, with the Sleep With Me, you know, Sleep With Me logo on there. Pretty cool. You could get there at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sleepphones and then use our promo code Sleep With Me and you'll get an extra five dollars off uh how do you want me to you want me to tuck in there move it move those blankets okay how about that okay you got it good night